Good morning, folks. I'm back. Uh, we're going to try to make this one a fast review of all the material you need to know for quiz three. If you look on the homework site, there is a review page. I will be solving the review page on this video. You will do better if you've already printed and attempted that review page. So please pause the video now, and if you haven't seen that page, you should uh, pull it up on your computer and attempt the problems or print it out and attempt the problems. Then come back to this video. The first group of problems we're going to ask you to do is what we're calling same base exponent equations. Uh, we call them same base because if you notice, this 7 here and this 7 there are the same number, and that's the base of the exponent. And if you have something like an exponential equation like this and the bases match, then for this side uh, and the other side to be equal, that's what that equal side means, then the exponents have to be equal as well, which means that you can take these powers and set them directly equal to each other. 3x equals negative 2x plus 10. Now you've converted this exponent problem into what is basically an algebra problem. Uh, and so you can solve it by adding 2x, and you get 5x equals 10, and you can divide by 5, and you get x equals 2. Uh, if you want to help yourself out, you can take 2 and plug it back in. Uh, I'm going to pause and do that and show you what it looks like. It's always good practice to plug it in and check uh, just as you're practicing because it helps you with exponent rules, um, and it reminds you what the whole equals things means. Uh, when you put in 2 for x, you get 7 to the 6th is equal to 7 to the 6th, which is a true mathematical statement. Uh, and that's what solving this equation for x equals 2 made. Uh, that's what the 6 means. All right, moving on to the next problem. So here we have uh, something a little more complicated. Um, one thing that makes it more complicated is that we have a 2, a 2, and a 4. So we're going to have to change some things around. Uh, another thing that's more complicated is that we have two 2s right there. So we're going to have to bring them together. Uh, we'll do the left side first. So 2 squared uh, and 2 to the 2x two plus 1. 2 squared is 4, but we're not going to write it as 4. Instead, we're going to use the exponent rules that says when you multiply the same base, we add the exponents. This is going to be the same as 2 to the 2 plus 2x two plus 1. So the 2x plus 1 is this 2x plus 1 here. This 2 is this 2 right here, um, which is the same as 2 to the 2x plus 3. All right, on the other side of the equation, 4 to the 10th, well, I don't know what 4 to the 10th is, and I made it a big number so that you couldn't just put it in your calculator. 4 is 2 squared. So this is the same as 2 squared to the 10th. And 2 squared to the 10th, we're going to multiply those exponents. So this is the other exponent rule. So this is going to be 2 to the 20th. Now you have a single same base on each side, so you can set the powers, or the exponents equal. So we're going to write 2x plus 3 equals 20. Uh, subtract 3, and you get 2x equals 17. And x is 17 divided by 2, or uh, 8.5. I'm going to spare you the check step, but again, you could plug in 8.5 just as a check into all the places you see in x. Uh, which is only one, and see what you get. For this last problem, we've really tried to ramp it up with the difficulty of the bases uh, and trying to, to mess things around. So there's one, there's a couple things that are sneaky about this problem. The first thing is the fractions. Um, the second thing is we have two terms on every side, so we're going to have to do that adding exponent rule. But the third thing is your choice of common base. It might seem like Doing this all with a base of 9 would be smart. And you could make it work with a base of 9, but the best base to work with is going to be a base of 3. The reason is that 27 is not a power of 9. 9 to the first is 9. 9 squared is 81. So we have to do some uh, fractional power of 9, and it turns out being 1.5 would work. But instead of doing that, we're just going to make everything into 3, because we have powers of 3. 3 to the first is 3, 3 squared is 9, and 3 to the third is 27. All right. So seeing that 27 is a clue that we should be making our base of 3. All right, I'm going to write everything here with uh, a common base. So, oh, excuse me. So 127 is 3 
to the negative third. 9 is 3 squared, and that's being taken to the 2x. 9, again, is 3 squared, and that's to the fifth. I like to put parentheses around these powers of powers. I think it, it helps me remember to multiply here instead of adding or any of the other things we could do. And here we're multiplying by 9, uh, 9, not 9, we're doing base of 3. So this is 3 to the negative 2 to the x. Next step is going to be, I want to make a line. Next step is going to be combining uh, these, all of these terms in one before I combine anything with like bases. Um, so we'll have 3 to the negative 3, that just stays, times 3 to the 4x is equal to 3 to the 10th times 3 to the minus 2x. So I've just multiplied all of these things using that multiplying exponent rule. Now I'm going to combine everything. Uh, because I have same bases here. So I'm going to do 3 to the uh, 4x minus 3. Combining these two, and I'm flipping the order just because it's more conventional and our, our brains kind of see it better that way. Uh, and same here, this is 3 to the negative 2x plus 10. You don't have to flip the order, but it helps me see what to do next. Now I see I've got matching bases, and so I'm going to set the exponents equal. So those are just going to come straight down. I'm going to say 4x minus 3 is equal to negative 2x plus 10. So I'm going to add 2x. I'm going to add 3. Um, I, pref I would much prefer adding to subtracting. Notice that I always just add wherever there's a negative to move that negative over. So I'm going to get 6x equals 13 uh, as these things cancel with each other. And so x will equal 13 divided by 6. Again, you should check this answer by plugging it all back in, but I'm trying to keep this video short, so I'll spare you that. If you notice on page 1, we didn't use any logarithms. Um, that's because we were able to make the bases match, so don't use a logarithm if you don't need it. On this page, though, just looking at the problem, they kind of smell a little bit different. It feels like maybe we won't make a base, find a base that's able to match. Because I see a 3 and a 2, and I don't know what is going on with this 7 and 74. Uh, maybe it's going to come out nicely, but just that 3 and a 2 right alone. Uh, we're even looking at the level 2 problem. I got a 7 and a 2, and again, I don't know what's going on with that 8 and the 20, but it feels like we're going to have to do something different. And the first thing that's different is we're just going to have to do some algebra to move the pieces around so it's a little more recognizable about what to do. Um, we're going to do the level 1 first, so we'll add 7. Uh, notice that you have to do this just like you would do a linear equation. So solve it just the same way you would do 9x minus 7 equals 74. You would add 7 and divide by 9. We're going to do the same thing here. Uh, except instead of x, we're, we have this 2 to the 5x term. Let me get that out of the way, because that's kind of messy. So we're adding 7. So we get 9 times 2 to the 5x equals, well, 74 plus 7 is 81. That's kind of nice. Now I'm starting to see the base coming into play. So let's divide by 9. 9 is just a number. We don't have to match a base when we have numbers and numbers. So we're going to get 2 to the 5x is equal to 81 divided by 9 is just 9. But now we have a problem. We could write 9 as 3 squared, but 2 is not 3. Those are different things, uh, which makes our life a little more difficult. So let's continue over here by doing a logarithm. So we're going to do log base something of something equals something. These are just, I'm sort of setting up my stage to fill in the blanks. 2 is the base, so this has to be a log base 2. Oh, log base 2, and we'll say it's log base 2 of 9 is equal to 5x. The uh, use of logarithms is to get an exponent down and on the other side. That's, that's converting um, exponent form 
into log form. And so the reason that we convert it into log form is because this lets us get x isolated and on its own. Um, but our final goal is to have x on its own, and there's this 5 in the way. So our final answer is going to be dividing everything by 5, log base 2 of 9 divided by 5 equals x. And this is something that you could put in your calculator if you chose to, um, but if you're doing this without a calculator, this would be your final step and where you would stop. For the next problem, it's going to be very similar. We've just kind of wrapped it up a little bit more intensely. So first thing, uh, 2 squared is 4. Let's just subtract 4 from both sides and see what happens. So uh, we'll get 8 times 7 to the 3 x plus 10 minus 10 equals those those reduce out and this is going to be 16 Ooh, I like this I see an 8 and a 16 here so let's divide by 8 and we'll get 7 to the 3 x plus 10 minus 10 equals 2 you may be looking at these tens and thinking don't those cancel uh, but the answer is no a 10 up here in a power and a 10 down here that's subtracted are completely different critters. And uh, we're going to deal with this 10 next. Uh, but to get to the 10 up here in the top, we have to do a logarithm. So it's all about orders of operations and isolating the exponent, isolating the power, so that we can get into that exponent. All right, so we'll add 10. And we'll get 7 to the 3x plus 10 equals 12. All right, again, coming over here, uh, we're going to change this into log form. So this is going to be the same as log base 7, because 7 is the base, of 12 is equal to 3x plus 10. That's that transition into logarithm form. And this is good, because now there's no exponents, there's no powers, uh, there's this logarithm, but it's all isolated with x over here on this side, safely. So uh, to solve this with algebra, we'll subtract 10 from both sides. And then after we subtract 10, we'll divide by 3. And this is really messy, so let's rewrite the final answer like this. Log base 7 of 12 minus 10. And then the whole thing is divided by 3, and that would equal x. And that's going to be your good, uh, acceptable looking final answer for a problem like this. So we solved the last group of equations by, con by converting an exponential expression into a log expression. You can also solve equations for x by converting a log expression into an exponential expression when the x is inside the log. So it's all about where the x is. Your choice of what you're trying to do is all about isolating that x, and you have to use inverse operations. So when there's a log, you're going to convert it to exponents. So uh, right here, the log is already isolated, right? It's, there's only that log on this side. So we're going to convert right away to exponential form. So this is going to say 3 to the 16th is equal to x plus 11. All right, 3 to the 16th is a really gross number. So we're going to just leave it as 3 to the 16th. I hope you're okay with that. Um, and subtract 11. So this is going to be 3 to the 16 minus 11 is equal to x. Um, again, it's safest just to leave it like this. Uh, there's the value of 3 to the 16th. And so if you do that minus 11, um, you could record this as your final answer. But to be honest, uh, most people that are looking at this are looking for the structure of the argument and the way that it's been solved. And to me, at least, this is almost nicer than writing this uh, kind of weird, gross, giant number, it's really hard to read giant numbers. It's much easier to read um, expressions that are closer to this. And it's complete because you've technically solved it for x. Okay, with the last problem, um, we first have to isolate the log. And also I notice there's some stuff going on inside the log. So there's going to be a number of steps here. Um, hopefully the numbers will be a little smaller than 3 to the 16th, though. So first let's subtract 11 and see what we get. So then we get 5 log base 2 of 3x plus 5 is equal to 41 minus 11 is 30. 
Oh, that's really nice. I see that 5 and that 30. So let's divide by 5. And so we get, as a, as a result, that the log base 2 of 3x plus 5 is equal to 6. This is much nicer than the other one because uh, we're going to convert it. When we convert it to exponential form, it's going to look like this. 2 to the 6th is equal to 3x plus 5. Um, 2 to the 6th is the same as 4 to the 3rd, which is the same as 16 times 4, which is the same as 64. So um, we're going to just write 2 to the 6th as 64 is 3x plus 5. And remembering that our goal here is, again, to isolate x. We're always trying to solve for x. Uh, we'll subtract 5, and we'll get 59 is 3x. And we'll divide by 3, and we'll divide by 3. And we'll get that uh, 59 thirds is equal to x. And uh, 59 is not evenly divided by 3, because it's 60 would divide by 3. So... I think the best thing to do is just leave it as 59 thirds. All right, um, like I wrote at the top of the sheet, this was seven practice problems. The way to get better at these is through practice, practice, and more practice. So if you felt like this was not enough and you're still a little bit hazy and a little bit confused, please go back and refer to all of the pages we've given you. Um, and try to solve as many problems as you can. If you're trying a problem on your own at home and you can't figure it out and you're not sure why the solution is the way it is, feel free to shoot me an email uh, and I'll write up a quick solution for you. I'm happy to do that. Uh, but I want you to be practicing as much as you feel is necessary. Uh, good luck and I will see you guys very soon.